We're at the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. It's the 80th birthday celebration of Quincy Jones and Michael Caine. And who better to talk about Quincy than his lovely daughter, Rashida Jones, the actress, writer, and singer, currently stars as Ann Perkins in NBC's highly successful Parks and Recreation. You're doing a documentary about your father? Yeah, and it looks like it. that. I don't know yet. We're just, we, I just felt like it would be a, a missed opportunity to not be here in Vegas for his 80th birthday. What was it like growing up with Quincy Jones as a dad? Well, I've, I've been asked that question, and the truth is I don't, I don't know what it's like to not grow up with him as a dad. What kind of father is he? He's, um, you know, he's a, kind of everybody's father, which is good. And bad. And, I mean, bad, challenging. Well, the bad, he, you'll, he give to the world, right? Yeah, but he's, he's so, um, he's pretty endless in the love that he has to give that it's okay. Because everybody, everybody who meets him thinks they're his best friend for eternity, and then the next person who meets him thinks the same thing. He has that wonderful ability of making everybody feel like the most special person he's ever met. How early on did you realize who he was? You know, I don't think it was until um, he won all those Grammys for Thriller, because that was the first time that his face was in front of, you know, the camera, the, you know, in, in front of the studio, um, and people really saw him as a celebrity. And we didn't really have celebrity culture back then. You were either you know, a singer or an actor. It wasn't, it wasn't as um, frantic as it is now. So even still, it wasn't as bad as it was now. But I, that's when I realized he was a celebrity. What city did you grow up in? L.A. And when they divorced, how did that affect you? Um, you know, how old were you? I was 10. And it was that's hard. A tough age. Yeah, it was hard the first couple years. Uh, my sister lived primarily with my dad. I lived with my mom. And now I'm so grateful because I really know my parents as people, as singular people, and not this unit. Um, and I, they're really close friends, and they're cool with each other. I and I kind of can't imagine them being together because <laughs> they're so different, but they love each other. Both famous. Did the fam? Did you cognizant of that as a child? A little bit, but my mom wasn't really acting when I was really little. So, and I, I knew she was an icon. I knew she had been on TV. But, um, but yeah, I was, I was definitely aware that they were in the limelight, yeah. Were you musical? I'm a little musical. Were you musical as a kid? Did you sing in the glee club? Were you at the school concerts? I did. I sang in all the choirs and all the musicals, and I took piano from age of five. And, yeah. I was he it. supportive, Quincy? Very. And still, actually, we just talked about it before we came here. I said, I really want to write a song with you. And he was like, that would be the best thing ever. I would love to do that. Maybe father-daughter kind of song? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would be perfect. What about your own life? I mean, you ventured off into the business. I did. Did you knew that was coming? I didn't. I, I tried to rebel early on. I tried to go the academic route, legitimate route. And I went to college, and I was going to go to law school. And then I just got, I just got called back to it. But um, and my dad was, you know, he was protective of me going into acting at a young age, you know, he would say to me, there's 80,000 people in line for that job. Why would you want that job? You know, why would you even want to try? Um, but I guess, you know, at some point you have to do what you love. Did you have the name and the, the, the daughter of who you were could kick doors open. Can't make you a talent, but it got you in, right? <laughs> You know, and to get in, to stay in is the hard part. Staying in is the hard part. Also, getting the jobs with acting, nobody's giving anybody oh. acting jobs as a favor. It's just not happening because they would get fired. So you had to audition. Yeah, I auditioned. I definitely pounded the, pounded the pavement for a lot of years. And after 10 years, I was going to quit and go back to school. And, and then I got a, a lucky break with The Office. So The Office was your break? Yeah. You auditioned for that? Yeah. Many times. Did, did you ever think you'd want to be a, a musical artist, too? I've thought about it. I've, I mean, you recorded? I've recorded a little bit. I'm really nervous about that. My, Why? Because my father's a musical genius. It's, it's mm. kind of a rough position to put myself in. But, um, and I, I have so much respect for music that I'd want to know it really well and, and be virtuosic before I, I did that professionally. Now, I'm proud to be part of this. What do you make of this 80th birthday? It's great. I mean, how many other people, you know, celebrate their 80th birthday in Vegas? <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> with Michael Caine. With, Mike, with Sir Michael Caine. And um, they're born the same day. And <laughs> same day, same hour, apparently. What, um, do you, what do you think drives your father? He does. He keeps on keeping on, right? Yeah. He never stops. Yeah. 
He takes nothing for granted. No minute, no hour, no friend, no family member, no experience. He takes nothing for granted. Everything is, is important to him. How does he get, this is maybe peculiar, how does he get away with being so nice in a business not known for nice? Right. I think he learned early on that he had to separate the business and the art. And I think for him, part of his art is being so magnanimous and nice and loving. So he's never going to get rid of that. That's who he is. But, you know, he, I think he's tough on the business side when he needs to be. I just think he knows how to separate them. Stevie Wonder, when I asked him about your father's influence, thought his main talent was diversity. Mm. Any type of music mm. he got into. Yeah. Agree? I do, but I think there's a thread. I think there's still like this, um, everything feels like a fresh take on whatever genre it is. So if it's, you know, musical scores, it's, it, you know, in Cold Blood, nothing ever sounded like that before in the movies. You know, pop music, Michael Jackson, nothing sounded like that. It was disco off the wall, but it wasn't. It was well, a fresh sound. they also sound. did Sinatra. And Sinatra. And Frank told me if he was going to be produced by one person, the rest of his life would be Quincy. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you had to hang around with all these people, right? I had to, yeah. Unfortunately. You knew Michael Jackson, Sinatra, all those yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Did that affect you at all? I mean, like your friends, you'd go over the house and Michael Jackson be there. Yeah, I mean, I think growing up in L.A., everybody has a little bit of that, you know, private schools in L.A., but for me it was great because I just was surrounded by talented people who worked really hard and, you know, were successful. That, that to me, was more of an indication of how I should work hard than it was anything else, you know. What, uh, I want to ask you a couple things about you. I know you don't want to talk about it. Just a couple <laughs> okay, things. Okay, okay. How did, how did, how did the uh, office come about? Um, that was a British show, right? It was a British show, and they adapted it for U.S. television. And I had had a friend that I went to college with who went to write for the show, and I got the audition for the show. And, you know, you would think if you have friends who work somewhere, they're going to help you get a job, which was not the case, um, there, because that, that, that place is a meritocracy, which is, I think, why the show was so... It was so good. Um, and I just auditioned a bunch of times, and I wasn't originally how they saw the part. Um, I was supposed to be kind of waspy and from Connecticut, but they, they made an exception because they thought I fit in well to the How'd world. they tell you you got it? I was, I think I was at the makeup counter at Barney's. <laughs> and I got a, yeah, I got a phone call saying that NBC had approved me, their choice for the part. How exciting that must be. Very been. exciting. I felt, at that time, I felt, oh, this is probably going to change things for me. Yeah. You felt that. Yeah. By the way, what about your love life? <laughs> you have? Are you involved I'm, with anyone? I'm so busy. It's, have you ever been involved? Have I ever been involved with anybody? I mean, I mean you're you really asked me Were you ever close to marriage? No. I was, yeah. I was engaged when I was 28. That's what I mean. Yeah, you I was serious? engaged. And, uh, what ever happened to him? What happened to him? He's, you know, he's married somebody else. He's very happy. We're friends. It was that's a, good. We were too young. How did Parks and Recreation come about? That's a crazy show. That's I mean, a that's crazy <laughs> show. I mean, it is the craziest. Um, it's same same writer, same creator. My friend who went to call I went to college with wrote for The Office and said, "We're doing this new show. I don't know what it's about. I don't know if you're going to be in it. I don't know what you'll be playing, but do you want to do it?" And I said, "Sure, <laughs> sure, whatever you I want." I don't know what it is, but you do it. Yeah, yeah. And I said yes. yes. How many years have been on now? Uh, we just wrapped our fifth season. Okay. Now, the idea, most ideas, when you explain it at the beginning, would have to seem ridiculous. We could do in this show about a parks and recreation. Right. right. Did you think that would be a hit? Um, I trusted them. I trust their taste, their take on life and relationships and comedy, the uh, Greg Daniels and Mike Schur. Uh, but, yeah, you never know what people are going to respond to or connect to, and that's definitely a, a small world, you know, local government. But <laughs> I think maybe... The characters are so big and they're so lovable that I think that's why people. Does like the crew it. get along? Ridiculously well, Is annoyingly that important? well. Yeah, for me, for a show's you know I mean? success. Does, does, yeah, do people have to like each other? I think that they do. I mean, sometimes no. I think famously people don't like each other in, in the and history of television, together, yeah. but uh, I think it, it definitely helps. Certainly. So helps. you like going to work every day? I, I very much do. Yeah. Do, do you want to? You want to do big screen? Acting? Yeah, you know, I, I, I co-wrote and produced a movie last year that I was in, and I really... What was it? 
it's, it was called Celeste and Jesse Forever, and it was with me and Andy Samberg, and uh, I really enjoyed the process of making a film from the ground up and producing and making it happen. It was really exciting. What does Quincy think of this? He's very sweet and proud and supportive. He was very supportive of, of my movie, and he let us do screenings at his house a bunch of times, and he's, he's very proud. What's your sister doing? I have so many. Well, how many do you have? I have five sisters and one brother. You keep in touch with them all? Yeah, they're all here. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's here for Quincy. Everybody's here. Ex-wives are here for Quincy. Ex-wives are here. My mom's here. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a delight seeing you. Nice to see Continue. you, too. We're going we're gonna to work together, by the way. Yes, you we are. You and I will introduce Larry Rubo, who founded this whole yeah. incredible... Have you been to the building? Yeah. The oh, awesome. I saw it. It's beautiful. Isn't that incredible? Beautiful. Frank Geary. Our guest has been Rashida Jones. She stars in Parks and Recreation. She's the daughter of Quincy Jones. We're here to celebrate. I'll see you at King's Things on Twitter.